Today we're going to be unboxing and reviewing the MediaSonic Homeworks Digital Converter Box. Uh, these things are extremely valuable. It has a built-in DVR. I'm going to show you all the everything about this, and then we're going to hook it up. And I'm going to show you all the menus and how to set it up. So let's get started. This is the MediaSonic Homeworks Digital Converter Box. This is the box that comes in. Uh, we have a little bit of information there. A description on the back on how to hook this up. So that is the box pretty much. Let's unbox this. Uh, this one has not been opened and I'll show you everything in the box and then we'll hook it up and I'll show you exactly how to set it up. So if we open up the box, it's all packed nice and neat. And of course right here in the bubble wrap is the MediaSonic Homeworks box. It is pretty simple. We can pull the plastic off the front and you'll notice here on the front, you have channels up, channel down, power, and a USB port. We've got some venting on the side, and on the back, you have your RF in, which is antenna in, RF out. We have channels three and four selector right here. And then you have an HDMI out, and you have your RCA out. Uh, and then you have a plug for uh, your DC in. The channels three and four are only used if you're using the RF out into the RF in of a TV. Most people these days would not be using this. You're either going to use HDMI or the RCA. If you want HD signal, you're going to be using the HDMI because you only get a standard depth through here. This would be for older TVs. Usually what these converter boxes are used for would be um, older TVs that cannot receive a digital signal. That is what these were primarily intended for. However, these now have built-in DVR, and so the reason that you would want one of these, even if you have a newer HD TV, is that most TVs don't have uh, the ability to record the off-air antenna signal. And if you put one of these hooked up to your TV, you can still use the antenna on your TV, but this is a secondary, and what this is gonna allow you to do is record programs from, from the antenna. So this is a perfect device for cord cutters who do no longer have uh, internet-based TVs like YouTube TV or cable TV. So you add one of these to your, um, your existing TV and it allows you to record off-air like the old days with a VCR. That's what this is for. So this is the box right here. Also comes with RCA connectors, which we won't use. Comes with the AC to DC converter, so you can plug it in to the wall. Comes with a remote control. Show you this real quick. There's the control. So we, you can, for playback for your DVR, there's buttons here, menu, volume up and down, record, power and mute buttons. It's a standard remote to operate the box. So it's a great remote and it takes AAA batteries. So we'll have to get some AAA batteries. And then in addition to that, what comes in the box, you have a pretty thick, you got your warranty information, a setup guide, and the user manual. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hook this box up to my laptop so I can record the screen so you can see exactly what it looks like on TV. Let's get it set up and I'll be right back. One other quick thing real quick before we hook this up. Um, you notice that this does not come with an HDMI cable, so you will need an HDMI cable if you're gonna hook it up that way. The other thing is you're going to have to connect an antenna to this. And for this demonstration, I just purchased one of these off of Amazon. It's pretty, um, they're pretty cheap. It's just a telescopic antenna that's going to go right on the back of this box. So you may want to pick one of these up. If you're in a more rural area, you're going to want to connect this to a higher antenna mounted outside your house that goes up, you know, five or 10 feet so that you can pick up a digital signal. Right now it's a black screen because nothing's turned on. Let's turn on the digital converter box and this is the launch screen that you will see takes a second to fire itself up and then now this is the first thing you will see on the installation guide and it's going to ask you the language we will leave it as English country USA and channel search we will go when I hit over, it is now automatically scanning for digital channels. And this could take a minute. I'm going to speed it up until the end. Okay, so I've sped that up and it's done. And it is now on the first channel. 
And if I go flipping through the channels, you'll see the different antenna channels. It has a nice little guide on the bottom, can tell you what's on. Got a bad signal on that one. But as you can see, you can now see what we have here. Um, the EPG button on the remote will pull up a program guide for each channel and it will tell you if the channels are putting out their metadata, it will tell you what's on, on that channel coming up over for the next hour or so. And you can flip through. And that's the EPG button on the remote control. So let's go ahead and exit that. And let's hit um, the menu button on the remote. And this is the menu for, um, this is the menu. So under the first part, you have program edit. So you have to put in your password to start. And I believe, yep, it, by default, it is 0000. zero, zero, zero. By going down through here, you can select your channels, you can add your favorites. There's a lot of things you can do here. If I exit out of this and go back to the menu, and I'm not recording audio at the, from the TV at the moment, so I'm just recording my voice here. So um, we go back there, you have program edit, then you have the EPG, which there was the button I already showed you. Um, go back to menu. Exit menu and I can go over so aspect ratio resolution you can change that um, you can change the resolution from 1080 if I do that it's going to block the screen then I'm not going to be able to see anything so I'm not going to hit that at the moment if I hit exit I can go back to the top you have your search so you can do an auto search a manual search you can set the country, signal type. You can also hook this up to cable TV. I'm not sure why you would want to, but it can work like a cable box. So we'll exit out of there. We can go set our time zone. So I'm in the central. Daylight savings time is currently on. We'll turn sleep off. And that would allow you to, it says like in an hour, it's going to automatically turn it off. Uh, the power on and off. Um, which we will leave that disabled. Exit, 12 or 24 hour. We're gonna stay on 12 hour. Hit exit, go over again. Uh, we can change the language, closed captioning, audio language, PCM audio or off, raw, PCM. I usually leave it on PCM. And then we have the settings. You can set your Pareto guidance, set your password, restore to factory default, and then you can even go down here and do software updates when they have firmware updates available. To be honest with you, I never do that, but sometimes they are valuable. So every once in a while, at least once a year, check to see if there is any firmware updates. And then you have your PVR config configuration, that is your basically your DVR. And so you would have to have a USB thumb drive or an adapter with an SD card plugged in so that you can use the DVR. So let's exit this for the moment. Continue to flip through some channels. I'll flip to a channel I know that I'm not in trouble with. There we go. Well, I don't, I say in trouble, not going to be in trouble, but so let's go ahead and get the menu back up because I don't want to have any copyright issues here. So let's go ahead and leave that up for now. And I'm going to plug in a USB drive and we are going to DVR something or PVR it, and then we'll go through the PVR settings. Okay, so now I've inserted a USB flash drive, a 16 gig flash drive, and the first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna go over to the PVR settings, and we're gonna go down to PVR configure, and we're gonna format that USB. And so it says USB-C1, uh, format, I select, hit okay on the remote to say okay, confirm, okay, and it is going to format this USB flash drive. Formatting is complete, so I can hit exit. I can hit exit. I can go back to the menu. I can go over to PVR configure again. Record device. And it is now saying I have, it's a 16 gig flash drive, but it's saying it is a FAT32 format and about a little over 14 gigs available to record. So um, 
I will exit from that, go back to the menu, under multimedia, and this is where you can choose photos, music, your PVR, uh, because if you have like a, a movie or a video on this flash drive that's an MP4, you can stick it in here and play it. So you can stick your um, videos in, your home videos you might have saved like on a hard drive. You can plug them into this USB port and be able to go to these places. Or if you have music saved, you can go play it on your TV through this converter box. So let's go ahead and go back. And let's go right here. Now with the, the flash drive in, I'm gonna hit record into record waiting and now you'll see that the, it is actually recording this program so we'll let it roll here for about 15 seconds and then we'll stop it and I will hit the stop do you want to stop record yes and it has stopped recording now on the remote you just hit menu Go over to your PVR, multimedia, go to PVR, and it will give you a list of what you've recorded. And if I hit play on, if I hit that, and so it is saying this, I recorded on this date from Create, which is a PBS station. I hit menu. Once I get it playing, I hit the hold button on the remote, and it will take it full screen. It will we can hit play again and it will initialize and start playing I can fast forward I can stop I can pause it so zoom yes I can pause play it's it's kinda hard to do with a short clip but you get the idea and the quality is actually really good so if we stop that, it goes back to this menu. We can hit menu button again, or we can exit. Let's see if it shows up, and it still shows up under movie, which is the same. It does not show up under that, because movie only shows an MP4. So let's get out of this. Let's go back. Go back to menu. If we exit out of menu, if you hit TV list on the remote, it will show you, you can scroll down to the channel you want. So say here, I'll hit enter. So you don't have to flip through one channel at a time. You can hit your TV list, go find the channel you want, hit enter. I have about 60 channels right now, just this little antenna and this little converter box. Hit EPG and you can go through and Let's see, 03 and 04. So, let's see, 01. One page is down the list. And three. And then go over and we can check the different channels. So, if we want to go to Cozy, and it's going to show you. So, Frazier's on, then Roseanne, the nanny. Roseanne, and so what you can do is you can actually um, also, let me see if this has, this has a timer, so you can actually, let's see, exit, timer, and it has a schedule. So if you hit the timer on the remote, you can get the schedule, and then if I hit one to add, I can go to whatever channel, So let's say I'm going to go to Rewind TV. I can set the time that you want to record, and you can set multiple timers. So it, you can't just click a program and say record the program. You have to set a timer for when these are on. Um, it says schedule invalid, but you can set a timer multiple timers to record multiple programs, but you have to set it like the old school VCR. You have to set it on a channel and a time, not necessarily the program, which is what most cable box DVRs allow for. So that's it. That is the um, Mediasonic Homeworks 
personal uh, converter box and DVR. So that's the review of the MediaSonic Homeworks digital converter box. I highly recommend those, especially for those who are cord cutters who want to still be, be able to record their programs off air. Hey guys, I hope you've enjoyed that video. Check out more videos from Mike's World. Until next time, have a great day.